ready to do some blood tests. Uh, you can use blood tests for checking pregnancy on a goat, um, and it's also good once a year to do a biosecurity scan on your goat to test for diseases like yonis, CL, CAE, Q fever, brucellosis. Um, so these are the supplies that we have on hand. The first thing you're going to need are submission vials, uh, the red top. We buy these directly from the lab in bulk and have them shipped to us and keep them on hand. They don't really go bad, so I buy a lot at once. Um, for taking your blood, we like to use 18 gauge needles. These are one inch long, 18 gauge. It's pretty hefty, but you're gonna need good flow when you um, are tapping in to the vein. Three cc syringes. Um, most samples required uh, at least two to three cc's. Some labs even require five cc's of blood. So these will work for what we are testing for today. Uh, you're gonna want hair trimmers for uh, trimming the hair from the neck. In the summertime, if your goat has a really short coat, you might not need this. In the winter, it's gonna be really hard to get that uh, needle in just the right spot if you can't see what you're doing. So we recommend having um, a pair of hair clippers. Uh, I also have my paperwork um, from the lab. Uh, we're going to be sending these to UBRL in California um, that uh, will go along with these samples uh, when they're shipped. So be sure to, to have, you're going to need a pen for this, but also a really nice sharp Sharpie for writing your animal's ID numbers and names on these tiny little tubes. So let's go out and start working with the goats. So to make your life easier, we recommend shaving the area around the jugular vein. Just a small patch, you don't need to do the whole neck. Looks good. So we like to back our goats up into a corner where they can't scooch away. Now we're gonna look for her jugular vein. As you apply pressure, you see it fills. The blood actually fills in the vein. Yep, and you wanna actually, if you have two people, it's better. So you can have one person hold down the vein and the other one uh, collect the blood with the syringe. So needle goes straight up. Draw back on your needle to make sure you're getting blood. And then you let go. You're okay. Nicely done, we got a full sample there. So the next thing we're gonna do is put that sample straight into our red top tube. And you'll see it's actually a vacuum seal. So it just pulls it right in. But don't overfill it. Here we go, all finished. So after our samples coagulated for about an hour, we went ahead and refrigerated them. And now we are going to box them up as per our lab's requirements. So we bundle up our vials in a rubber band. They get wrapped in paper towels or newspaper. They go inside a plastic Ziploc bag labeled biohazard. Let's see if I can do this one handed. Oh, we're not. Okay. We're going to seal that guy up. This is going into a box that says exempt animal specimen. I put in some bubble wrap and whatnot in there. And these samples, because we are doing biosecurity on these goats, uh, need to go on ice. So at the bottom of my shipment, I'm going to include some ice packs. and our samples. And then I've got my paperwork all finished and my check going with it. And I will go ahead and fold these up and these should also go in a bag. So a separate bag, I should say, so that if those samples leak or get cracked, um, that this information is still intact. So our box is ready to go. Uh, we always time our blood draw days around the laboratory schedule. So these will ship out on Monday via UPS to arrive at the lab by Wednesday. So their test days for um, these types of samples are Thursdays. 
So that's something to keep in mind when you're doing your blood sampling. Is it going to get there in time? So these guys, we pay a little bit extra, but we use UPS uh, and we'll be dropping these off. Thank you.